Sorrow. Pardon? The gap, the pain of the distance, that is where the sorrow lies for you. Ah yes, sorrow. Sorrow for the condition, sorrow for the apparent inevitability of it, sorrow for the fact that no one seems to know, sorrow for the fact that no one feels like anything can be done about it, sorrow for the enslavement, sorrow for the illness and isolation, sorrow for the idiocy, sorrow for the greed, sorrow for the sick, sorrow for our pain, sorrow for our weakness, sorrow for our strength, sorrow that any of this needs to be, sorrow that we can't just slow the fuck down and do it properly. Of all the emotions, it has been sorrow that has remained with me. It has been there through all the joy, all the fear, all the anger. It underlies all of them. For me, it is the fundamental. We live, therefore we have sorrow. Sorrow is the essence of actualized life. Here we are, the wraith said. Yes, here we are. Until we know sorrow, we cannot know anger. Until we know anger, we can never defeat fear. Until we defeat fear, we can never know joy. People don't understand how this stuff works. They think they can get by with knowing only fleeting sadness, drugging it, and then getting back to joy, which is essentially the state that people go into to escape all the fear they actually feel beneath the surface. The fear that actually rules them. The fear of you, of death. Sorrow is a wolf's pain. The wolf is anger. The wolf is resentment. Resentment of all that is wrong. The wolf is fear's bane. Through the wolf we defeat fear. When fear dies, then the wolf dies, for he has no desire to live. Only then comes joy, in the absence of the fear of death, in the death of the wolf, in the death of the individual soul. But no one wants that. Everyone wants to go to heaven. They can't bear the irrelevance. Death took a pawn. The man did not move, just watched the sand shift the pieces on the board and kept talking. Well, the issue is they, in the sense of the term that they are thinking of, are irrelevant. It's their fear talking. It's a limbo state. I mean, you've got joy and you've got fear. Fear is what maintains darkness. Joy is the absence of darkness. None of them are just emotions. Joy and fear are absolutes in this sense, and anger is simply a tool. When sorrow has been realized, then anger becomes its tool to defeat fear. I would not wish to know anything other than sorrow in this world. To pretend to feel joy seems disingenuous. To be ruled by fear seems to be precisely the problem. Sorrow is the only reasonable emotion to feel, and then anger on behalf of joy. But who would wish to feel anger in this world? You can see it. It is a person who stands before waves. It's all fine until the storm waves come. If you are so angry you try to stand in front of those, they will punish you. You looked up some other themes. Tell me about those. I looked up the seven sins and the seven virtues. The man moved a bishop to pressure a castle. And? These are the sets. Pride, humility, greed, charity, lust, chastity, envy, gratitude, gluttony, temperance. Wrath, patience, and sloth, diligence. What about them? They are what they are. They reflect the structure that created them. They are the relationships that characterize and define a certain way of being. I'm not saying that's how I see things, nor am I saying it's not. But it is interesting to look at how a society develops as a result of its guiding framework. Start at the beginning. Pride and humility. Humility. 